Hello everyone and welcome to the Fry Smiles Oral Health Network. I am your host Scott Fry and today on the show we're going to be tackling the topic of stains caused by mouthwashes. Many of you out there may not already be aware of this, but yes, the mouthwashes found in your bathroom and the ones you're probably using on a daily basis can increase the amount of stains precipitating onto your teeth. And in fact, most of the plaque killing ingredients found in mouthwashes today will increase the precipitation of stains onto the surface of your teeth. And they do this by slightly modifying the protein coating on the outside of your teeth and by directly interacting with dietary chromogens, which is just a big fancy term for the staining compounds found in foods and drinks. And ironically, the more effective a mouth rinse is at reducing plaque, the more likely it is to produce stains. And there are three categories of mouthwashes that can produce staining on teeth. The first one is what's called cationic antiseptics. And what these are, are positively charged molecules that are designed to go in and fight bacteria in your mouth. And these types of rinses will produce a yellow-brown type of stain. The most notorious rinse in this particular category is what's called chlorhexidine. And that's a prescription rinse that you'll get from your dentist if you really need it. And it's not something you'll typically find in stores. The one that you will find in your local pharmacy um, are rinses containing what's called cetylpyridinium chloride. And this is a very popular additive to fight plaque in mouth rinses. The second category of mouth rinses contain what's called polyvalent metal salts. And these particular types of rinses will produce more of a golden yellow type stain. And an example of a polyvalent metal salt is stannous fluoride. So look for that in your ingredients on your mouthwash. And our last category is, I'm going to hold this up just a little bit for everyone, phenolic mouth rinses. And these produce a general yellow type stain on the teeth. And the most notorious uh, example of this is Listerine. And in particular, the eucalyptol and the thymol phenolic compounds in the Listerine uh, and Listerine-like rinses are what have found to be the major ingredients that increase staining. Now, just because your particular mouthwash at home contains one of these three types of ingredients doesn't automatically mean that you should be super worried about accumulating tons of stain in your teeth because, number one, not everyone's saliva is the same, and that means that not every person is going to respond exactly the same way to a given mouthwash. And also, a lot of the mouthwashes you'll find at the store actually don't contain sufficient quantities of those particular staining ingredients to produce a whole lot of additional stain. And ones that do contain an abundance of those particular ingredients will be specifically labeled antiseptic mouth rinses. And you'll be able to see it in big bold letters somewhere on the bottle, antiseptic. So look out for that. And if you're a person who's really interested in this topic, or is particularly predisposed to staining, you're going to love the next couple of posts because we're going to be talking about which mouthwashes out there don't actually produce additional stain and which ones produce only a little bit. So we're going to help you select one at home that will help you out with your staining problems. And in the meantime, the best recommendation that I can give is if your particular mouthwash contains one of those, you really like it, it's really useful and it's good for your oral health and you don't want to change, what you can do is make sure that you only use that rinse at night right before bed. Because breakfast, obviously, when you go to bed, it's a long ways away, and that means the risk of those particular ingredients in your mouthwash interacting with something that you'll be having for breakfast is much less than it would be, say, if you're using the rinse right before breakfast or after lunch or any other time that's close to a meal during the day. So I hope all that information is useful to everyone. Take care and I'll see you next week.